In a housing market where even a fixer-upper with asbestos and serious water damage can't seem to stay on the market for more than a few days, a third of homes that went under contract in the past month had even accepted an offer within the first week of being listed. Some notoriously unsellable celebrity homes that have finally found buyers. For instance, Joe Pecci's $6.5 million Jersey Shore home just sold earlier this month after two years on the market. And Rosie O'Donnell's Saddle River Mansion sold in the spring five years after first being listed. Still, a handful of celebrity homes have continued to just sit and rot, so we went ahead and took it upon ourselves to figure out why. So these are new celebrity mansions that nobody really wants to buy. Up first, we have Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Megastar Dwayne The Rock Johnson has listed his estate in Powder Springs for $7.5 million. The estate has nearly 15,000 square feet to go with more than 45 acres of land. According to reports, Johnson bought the property in 2019 for just over $9 million. According to Zillow, the home features exquisite detail including wide plank, old growth walnut flooring, great stone fireplaces, high ceilings, great natural light, and the owner's suite on the main level opens to a flat walkout private backyard, including the pool, pool pavilion, two apartments, a five-car garage, and a large grassy lawn. Not to mention the home overlooks a pristine lake that includes lush pastures and even includes a 12-stall barn and riding area. Out of the 15,000 square foot main house, it includes eight bedrooms and nine bathrooms. In addition to the floor plan includes a den, library, living room, office, gym, wine cellar, and even two guest apartments. It has a very grand kitchen, and the kitchen includes a breakfast bar, island, and stone counters that looks out to the family room. It's located close to the popular Buckhead neighborhood and about 45 minutes from Atlanta Airport. It's not clear whether the Fast and Furious actor spent any time in this property at all over the short period of his ownership, because while he owned this place, he was renting a different home close to Atlanta while he was shooting multiple movies there last year. As you can see, the house is in great condition and is expected to sell this year, although already going through multiple price drops. And not to mention the house has been on the market for almost two years. This house was just built in 2003, so it's new as well. After purchasing the house for $9.2 million and now trying to sell it for $7.5 million, I don't think he's worrying too much about the cost considering Forbes named him the highest paid actor this year. So what do you guys think? Would you like to live in Dwayne The Rock Johnson's house? Or is this house just too big and on too much land for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Up next, we go to tennis star Serena Williams' house. This house is a perfectly fine 6,000 square foot newish Spanish style construction, but it's in our estimation almost too normal for almost $8 million. There's simply not enough there for that price. It has all white walls, pale wood floors, and steel framed windows. The outdoor space is also a bit underwhelming. There is just a couple of relatively shallow balconies and a narrow backyard and a pool squeezed tightly into the corner of a triangle shaped lot. Compare this to a slightly cheaper house down the block where you can get a bigger pool plus an actually massive gazebo, a turreted staircase, and tons of moldings. Now this house is still beautiful but the price is very high and clearly causing trouble selling. Earlier this year, the house was previously listed for $10.2 million, then instantly took a price cut of a million, then another price cut of $500,000, and now we're at another price cut again of $500,000. So now the house is listed for an even $8 million, and even that's proven very hard to get people in the house to even look at it. Houses in this area are still around that price, but you're getting more square footage, more of a yard, and at least out of all the houses on the street, way nicer backyards and pools. Even including this beautiful basement, the house is just too expensive for what you're really getting. What do you guys think? Is this somewhere you would like to live? If you had $8 million, would you spend it on this house? Or maybe would you buy something else? Also let us know in the comments down below. Up next, we go to Kid Rock's Detroit Colonial Mansion. Built in 1930, the six-bedroom, 6,000-square-foot 6 colonial is just one of the six riverfront homes in Detroit. It's located on Dwight Street, a few houses down from the mayor's residence, the Manugan Mansion. Rock bought the home in 2012 and lived there until he sold it in 2019 and moved to Nashville, Tennessee. The original buyers who purchased it from Rock didn't live in the home and kept it as is before relisting it. She plans to make the home her primary residence and fix some things up. 
but leave everything just the way it is with all the Kid Rock furnishings. And like I said, there are only a couple houses on the river that are listed for a million dollars in Detroit right now, so the pool of potential buyers is pretty small. And if they don't love a peak colonial style home with three dormers and a serious colonnade, then forget it. There is a very nice private boathouse with a large roof and deck and jet ski lifts, which means the buyer has to already be interested in that kind of stuff as well. Up next, we go to Rihanna's Los Angeles Mansion. Now listed on the market, Rihanna's Los Angeles home for $6.5 million after it spent four years on and off the market. The pop star and entrepreneur who is 34 has owned the 7,200 square foot Mediterranean style home since 2017. According to the records with Property Shark, she bought the gated residence in the celebrity filled neighborhood of the Hollywood Hills for $6.8 million. She purchased the property through a trust linked to Evan Geo, a partner at the New York based business management company company, FFO, and member of the Global Advisory Board of Rihanna's Foundation. The home has been on and off the market for the last couple of years, even including it as a $35,000 a month rental. It was first listed in 2018 for nearly $7.5 million, then again in 2021 for just $7.8 million, and most recently for $7.3 million. The listing was removed from the market in January, with the sale closing last week. The residence has six bedrooms and ten bathrooms, plus a guest house that is outfitted as a fitness center. Sitting above the Sunset Strip, the house offers city views as well as amenities such as a screening room, a chef's kitchen with an adjacent family room, a formal dining room, a billiards room, a primary bedroom suite with a fireplace, sitting area, and spa-like bathroom. Up next, we go to Shakira's Miami Mansion. Once again in the news, Shakira is trying to sell her beautiful Miami Mansion, this time for almost $16 million. The Colombian superstar first listed this 9,200 square foot home back in 2018 for $11.6 million, according to Forbes. Now, almost three years later, it seems the five-time Grammy award-winning singer is still having trouble getting this home off her hands. With Florida real estate being very hot right now, it makes sense that Shakira is selling her home for a higher price. The stunning mansion has six bedrooms rooms and seven and a half bathrooms. The bright and minimalist style home sits on North Bay Road Drive overlooking Miami's waterfront. The open concept home allows for those in the kitchen and the living room all to feel close to one another. The Middle Eastern inspired home even has a hookah lounge and a gym where it said Shakira would rehearse all her dances. It's not immediately clear why this property would not sell. It's priced fairly reasonable for the area and has all the things one would expect. Like mentioned before, at least six bedrooms, a pool, a hundred feet of water frontage with a dock. The interior is plain all white in a very minimal way, but that's not surprising in Miami. Perhaps the design comprising a series of low slung hip roof structures. It's too modest for people dropping millions in Miami these days. Now don't get me wrong, I know houses in this area go for that price and it's a very beautiful home, but if I had almost $16 million to spend, I do not think I would spend it on this house particularly. But that's just me, so go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Up next, we go to Jennifer Lopez's $25 million Nomad Penthouse. The Whitman is near the corner of East 26th Street and Madison Avenue, right above Madison Square Park, which may not be too high traffic of an area for privacy-seeking rich people. This was the very reason Lopez listed the property, and while the unit is indeed a penthouse, the building is only six stories the shortest on the whole block, and is sandwiched between much taller buildings. Perhaps that's just not enough of a high up there feeling for billionaires. Most listings in this price range since the pandemic are either for penthouses or townhouses near Central Park or even in Tribeca. So Jennifer Lopez has temporarily taken her Manhattan penthouse off the market after four years without even a single offer. The four bedroom, eight bathroom abode was delisted on October 13th. It's said that the privacy was an issue for the star and she wanted something more secluded, but it looks like she'll have to hang on to the property for a bit longer. Jennifer Lopez, who was 52, listed the residence in October of 2017 for $26.5 million. Two years later, she gave the penthouse a $2 million price cut, but it still wasn't enough to entice a buyer. J-Lo purchased the house in 2014 for $20.2 million. The penthouse offers 10,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor living overlooking the Madison Square Park. It even has a private elevator that leads you to the fifth floor with a secure entry foyer which opens up to a great room with a skylight and three French doors leading out to the south facing terrace. The kitchen comes with a breakfast bar and dining area and is fully outfitted with finishes, including chef's kitchen, a large island, an open shelving, and custom cabinetry. One possibility why she hasn't been able to sell the penthouse is the location. The average listing price for the neighborhood run about 2.8 million, so her 20 million is way off the regular home's price. 
Up next, we have Mary J. Blige's $3 million New Jersey house, first listed in August of 2019. It's never a good sign when the listing doesn't come with any interior photos. The listing mentions a gym, an office, and three fireplaces, but leaves them all up to imagination. An earlier listing did include a photo of a massive rear deck opening onto a sort of bean-shaped pool with a grim-looking puddle. Anyway, anyone looking for a comparable home, at least five beds and five bathrooms on nearly an acre, has a half a dozen of other options, with plenty of images showing off grand staircases, kitchen islands, wood-paneled ceilings, and much more. And that's not the only house Mary J. Blige can sell. This is also another New Jersey mansion that she bought for $8 million and is now on the market for $5.8 million and is having trouble selling this new mansion as well. This house is almost 18,000 square feet and has all state-of-the-art features, but for some reason she can't get it off her hands. Maybe real estate just really isn't her thing. All right, everyone, I think that's going to wrap this video up. Like I mentioned in the beginning, follow all my social media and also 50% of the people who watch me don't subscribe. So just if you're watching, just click the subscribe subscribe button it's free it means a lot and then an alternative option would be to become a member which cost a couple dollars but then you know i'll be calling you guys facetiming you guys you get cool badges you get exclusive videos um i'll be making videos that i can't show like public channel so you guys get a ton of cool features and by clicking here and becoming a member but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i love you guys thank you for the constant support feel free to share this video on anything and i'll see you in the next video later